Are we starting now? <laughs> How are you, okay, sir? Okay. I'm well, mate. How are you? <laughs> yes, I'm good. It's been a little bit of time, has it? It's been some time. It has been some time. Yeah, it has. Two weeks. A little bit longer than usual. Mm. Yeah, we missed a week, but you you did have a hospitalisation and operation, so we can let you off, can't we? It's true. Uh, yes, I had to lay down like a lazy boy. You've taken a little bit of time off work. We bounced. It's fine. It's good for you. You, sh- you should take a rest sometimes. True. You work too hard sometimes, I feel. I know because I used to do that. You did used to do that. I still kind of do that some, a lot of the time. Yeah. But we play hard too, it's fine. That's true. Well, that's I mean, true. we're going to go and sit in the I'm park not... after this like a bunch of cuties, aren't we? Yeah, the sun's out, isn't it? So oh. let's go enjoy the weather. Mm. Let's go enjoy the weather. I think so. I do think sometimes, though, that it's good for you to take a break. If I hear you're taking a break, I'm not mad at it. Oh, for sure, yeah. No, and definitely of my faults, that's definitely, yeah, one, for I don't sure. I know if it's a fault. Well, because it does get to a detriment, doesn't it, when yes. your client, not even just for yourself, like when it comes full circle and your business starts getting impacted because you're not getting enough sleep and clients aren't getting what they deserve because you don't have the energy to get them or something. Well, that's the ultimate sign that you need to scale it back. Yeah, for sure, for or sure. you need to take a break, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's the ultimate sign. Welcome back, though. It's News of the Week. News of the Week. News of the Week. Things have been happening. How have you been? It's, I'm good, thank you. It's Tuesday the 10th of August currently, yes. on News of the Week. You could, I, you could have put a gun to my head then, and I could not have told you what day it was. Nah, you've been off work though, so you've got no, I don't know, Obligation. Of time. No, literally none. Days are bleeding into each other, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm migrating from my um, sofa to my chair every day and back. Yeah, what have you been up to? Watching films, you mentioned earlier? Yeah, what yeah. Else? Chilling. Um, chilling, watching films, getting on YouTube rabbit holes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that YouTube whole camping thing holes. we were talking about yesterday, that was... Camping videos, they get me on YouTube sometimes. I think Saturday morning, I woke up at maybe like half eight or something, and then didn't eat breakfast until like 6pm. I just sat there in my armchair, looking at my telly, <laughs> watching uh, YouTube videos on hammock camping. Hammock camping, And yeah. anything that you could think related to that. So, I also... this is how life is being spent currently. No, I, I like it. I know some good, like camping and woodland channels i like i like some of the channels where have you ever seen those videos people just build things in the woods like two or three guys and they don't talk and um, and no they're words. always they're always wearing like just shorts and no shoes and like none of the tools are legit it's like just a rock and they're digging out of mud and things like this maybe or maybe we're not watching the same things i'm watching where the one i want to say malaysia is where the ones where people make those the, like there's the, a guy that makes the underground thing out of mud like underground swimming pool. i know exactly oh. what you mean i've seen those videos and he digs it out of mud with his hands you're right they're the ultimate 2 a.m youtube rabbit hole numbers them that they're, they're hilarious i like watching people build there's like <laughs> there's, 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 i think this, these brothers and a dad that make viking houses in silence <laughs> just out of like axes and they've got like old school so like real viking equipment like they would have had and they just show you slowly you need to send me that it's like there's no words there's no music it's just forest sounds and just guys cutting okay wood i might have placing logs i feel like i might have stumbled across that i've not watched it there was one that i didn't watch it was like two hours long which is just like a time lapse of like a a full log cabin build in a forest that's what that's i'm saying the kind of shit i'm into okay i like that i don't All know right. why I don't yeah. know why it must be in my DNA. I think it's like just the very, very stupid part of my testosterone fueled masculinity. <laughs> where it's just, it, you know, it's just a simple thing. It's, it, uh, uh, actually, talking about that, here's some news of the week that we did not plan to talk about. The first ever gym bro was discovered. Did you hear about this? No, what do you mean? So they. They, you, you know, the the the, the 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 general they that you refer to when you're referring to the the people that be. As okay. It were. They found um, a rock, right, like a big boulder that was like in a cave, like it had been put in, rolled into this cave, right, and it had had this thing inscribed it's on like it. Like archaeologists. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. On inscribed on it, once they deciphered it, it said whatever his name was. I don't know, like Igor or some big brutey guy. What? Igor could lift <laughs> this over Excuse his me. head. And it weighed 136 kilos, they weighed it. Oh, I feel like I've heard about that in... in and I could wait, hold this over my head, yeah. So, the first ever gym bro. He's Bra- definitely not the first ever gym bro, though, I'm sorry. He's the first guy, yeah, bro. No, the Greeks invented... This guy's Stone Age gym bro, what do you mean, the Greeks? No, because if it was Stone Age, they didn't have writing, so how could it have been Stone Age? No, no, nobody yeah. nobody carved, I... What did you say it was called? Igor? Uh. No one's called <laughs> Igor in the Stone Age. <laughs> uh, I don't know, kind of. No, I know you don't. Know. This is it's all facts and no feelings. <laughs> no, it's the other way around. It's all feelings <laughs> yes. and no facts in this story. <laughs> anyway, this guy's a gym bro, and I'm stronger than him. <laughs> this is what's going on? <laughs> no, it was the Greeks, wasn't it, that invented gyms? Though 
Like the word gymnasium. Was it the Greeks or was it the Romans? Oh, gymnasium. Sound. Gymnasium. Um, yeah. I would guess... What does that sound? That sounds quite Greek, doesn't it? I think it's it? Greek, yeah. It sounds Greek. I'm Googling it right now. Yeah, it's Greek. Yeah. Um, gymnasium. Look at us, Greek. we guessed and got it right. Woohoo. <laughs> The gymnasium in ancient Greece functioned as a training facility for competitors in public games. It was also a place for socializing and engaging in intellectual pursuits. All right, then. Uh, and people would train naked. That's what they Nice. Were. This is this is on the Google, or you know this from personal No, I know that, but research. actually, reading on the next bit, it says, the name comes from the ancient Greek term gymnos, which means naked. I might be pronouncing that wrong. G-Y-M-N. Oh, with a slanting right apostrophe above it. Nice. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce this. S, gymnos or gymnos or something, which means naked. So then they would train naked. Why? It's a good question. They would they, they would also have naked statues though, wouldn't they, in ancient Greece? And even if you go True. to Greece, have you ever been to Greece now? No. I have many times. And if you go walking really? through the... Really? Yeah. At least, Take me to Greece. I've been at least five times or something. Mm. I can't remember. But if you go walking in the classic Greek shops where they've got stereotypical greek thing like <laughs> stereotypical greek what would it be like, like ornaments pottery and stuff yeah, they have in greece, yeah. right? there's yeah. always like phalluses like penises oh like, for sure always knocking about yeah i actually weirdly I don't know why to be honest i don't know what the deal is there'll be some actual culture behind that but i walked past a shop on west street yesterday that had like a greek style statue in it yeah. with his little cock out as well and that was just knocking about on no division street mm. really our very own local Greek cock and balls. Um, if you want to go and view it yourself, <laughs> do you know why they they why they put small penises on Greek statues? I did. I remember hearing it, but no, I've forgotten because they did it on purpose. They used to think in those it was, days it it, sh it was be it was better that yeah. it was better, but I can't remember why. Yeah, what this that, that's that's the case first. <laughs> what's better? Was it small penises or big penises? <laughs> On, on statues we'll get specific, we'll specifically get on statues. Well, for sheer practicality and efficiency, it's got to be small, right? Well, and not to bat for my own team or anything. I was going to say that's what, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's what a small man would say. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I got there first, so now it's not an insult. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, wh why though? Because uh, they they thought that bigger penises were for barbarians. Yeah, and if grotesque. You were more, right. If you were more godlike, and they thought if you had a bigger penis, you would less control over your sexual tendencies and emotions and that wasn't seen as high or like high status or godly to do those things so statues of greek gods have always got small peni interesting peni being the singular i wonder if there is a consistency there peni being the singular <laughs> the consistency in what um Making themselves feel better. I don't know what morality and penis size. Pen people were lo looking at the, s the the little small member that's going on. They're like, no, I'm just godly, bro. Just <laughs> <laughs> backing themselves up. So, yeah, interesting. Well, we, I don't think we need to divulge down the path of penis no more. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable. Unless, well, did we bigger or smaller? What, in, in, what's better? <laughs> Straight onto what's better. For me personally, neither. Yeah, also me. me. me also personally. my preference. Yeah, I do. I do. I, and I guess. Angling towards my preference of neither, I'd say smaller then for that reason. <laughs> well, if you've, you've got to deal with one, you'd rather it. <laughs> I'm like, I can go it's less penis. I, can, I can see where you're coming from. It's going to be less. If it's going to be an issue, it's going to be a smaller issue. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. Okay. Uh oh. We uh -oh. got through the first what's better. That's nice. Nice. Yeah, you brought an actual what's better. I did, yeah. Go yeah. on then. Hit me with oh, were you there already? Yeah, why um, not? What was my what's better? Uh, what's better between. Oh, what was it? It was okay. So to preface this, but for either fat loss or for just calorie or like maintenance, weight loss, maintenance, whatever. Okay. Um, what's better between high calorie intake and burning? Okay. Versus low calorie intake and low calorie burning as well. So let's yeah. say, for example, four calorie, four thousand calories in and out, or fifteen hundred in and out. Yep. What's better? I have no immediate answer to this question. <laughs> You're very upset by it. No, I'm just trying to consider very... the variables and I can't immediately pick one. Like a good because, little robot. Because it depends. Like a good little little robot. And I don't you I know on what's better we try not to say it depends. We try to just pick one. Blindly. And um without any actual advice. Alright, well if I have to pick one blindly, I'm gonna go for eat more, burn more. Okay. Rather than eat less, burn less. Or if if the resulting fat loss and weight management was the same like the calorie deficit or calorie 
average oh yeah for sure was the same on both on the eat more move more one you'd get more nutrition coming yeah. into the system overall you'd get more calories coming in and yes you burn them off but the, there would be residuals left over which would be vitamins and minerals fiber higher protein intake all this kind of stuff you're exercising more so you're building more fitness you're probably building more muscle you're probably more toned stronger fitter faster that's nice through yeah. eating more burning more if you're talking about pure health and longevity, that might not work out as well. Lower calorie intakes across basically all living animals show longer lifespans. So if you wanted to live the longest, it might be better to eat less. Mm -hmm. So you're here for a good time or a long time. <laughs> even if, yeah, even if you exercised less, lower calorie intakes do seem to extend lifespans across people and other animals as well. So if you wanted to live the longest, that might be the best because you're just putting less stress on the body rather than taking loads of food and ragging all the exercise. Obviously, that makes you very healthy, but I don't know. It'd be, be interesting to see what that kind of level of like uh, activity would look like if you were eating that little as well and just burning that little every day. 1,500 well, calories. 1,500 would be none. Um, it, well, it and this is why I couldn't answer the question immediately because it depends who you are and what you're doing. True. I have some clients <coughs> who's... Baseline calorie maintenance is lower than 1,500 anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a female that's five foot zero. And you've got and some you've clients that have probably got job. a higher BMR. Say than, again, sorry. And you've probably got some clients that have got an even higher BMR and just physically, even if they were to lay in bed all day, couldn't bring it below 1,500. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like you. Yeah, like me. Or if you, you, prob yeah, probably you. Um, yeah, my baseline calorie probably maintenance, around if I just laid in bed all day, is probably 2,000 or a bit more. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Same for you, probably. Yeah. Um, yours would probably be a bit higher than mine because you weigh much slightly more than me. You're slightly yeah. taller, so yours would probably be slightly higher. Height and hair. Take but if it. you're a female that's five foot two or less, and you've got a sedentary lifestyle and you don't exercise, your calorie maintenance can be lower than two, one thousand five hundred. It's not sure. often, but For it sure. can. No, I've seen it. Yeah, I've definitely <coughs> had, had clients in the past that fit that description, um, and yeah, that is the case. And usually, what is the factor you can change there is walk more, isn't it? And but if we mm. took out the numbers and we had to say eat less but don't move much and mm -hmm. then you'll lose weight or move more exercise loads, take in more calories, but still lose the same weight. That one, more fun, more freedom, more food, more nutrition, less restriction, more exercise, better health, better fitness. Every time. Pow. Boom. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's nice because I almost didn't know going in what I thought of that. And I think you confirmed, which is nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It, just because there's more nutrition coming in overall. So you'd get with more residual nutrition, like a higher protein intake and bit, more vitamins and minerals yeah, no. and more food variety as well. And less feelings of restriction. Yeah, that's the case, isn't it? Because that's something that me and actually, yeah, me and Sam, who's obviously six foot, what is he, seven at the gym or something, we're talking about that. Like, even when he's cutting, when he's cutting on. Sam, who works at your gym, sorry. Sam, who works at the gym. Yeah, he's, he's how tall? Six, seven? Six foot seven. Too he's, tall. He needs to give some He looks to me. like a huge Viking <laughs> with a tiny little head. He's got such a small head. Has he? Yeah. His body is huge. Yeah, he's his six body foot is seven huge. and he's also jacked and wide. Wide, very wide. Yeah, but like big arms, big shoulders. Starting to not fit in the pods kind of wide, yeah. But yeah, the, the entrance pod at the gym. Yeah, yeah, and we were basically saying for him that even How though much food does he eat? when he's cutting mm -hmm. at 3,500 calories is, it? is his, his cutting. Pretty severe cutting as well. That God, him. really? Yeah. That's unfair. Well, so that's the thing is that him cutting at that is that, yes, that's miserable energy-wise for him because he's still suffering the same as we all are when we're cutting. But in three, three and a half thousand calories, he could have a Domino's a day if he wanted. And still be on that cut, like so. The actual like, yeah, you could have three dominoes in a day. No, dominoes like two thousand each. Well, it depends what you're having. If you're ordering, if, you the, if one... you're ordering the right dominoes, Connor. All right, well, yeah. You okay. If you're getting one medium pizza, that's, that's less than a thousand calories. One medium pizza. Exactly. So if you're doing it wrong, <coughs> then yeah, you'll st you'll stay small like you. <laughs> but yeah, so it's mad. Like what you can get away with if you just start that size. Yeah, not fair. It's like. Bigger people use more fuel, like bigger cars use yeah. more fuel. Like if you're a five foot two or less female, you're like a Fiat 500 and he's a monster truck. Even if you just both sit there and be alive. Take over. Like blub, the blub, engines blub, are running. Blub, 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 yeah, he just uses way more food and fuel just by being huge, <clears throat> doesn't he? Mm. Should we jump into a few news topics? Please. Um, I've got a few things to go through. We don't necessarily have to go into them too much, but we'll just see what happens, do you think? Let's go. All right, the first thing is I did a, a podcast, which will be out after this podcast, actually, with Thomas Lee earlier today, and he oh. asked us a question. Oh. He said, what do we think to Psalms and their safety? 
Interesting. Do you know about this? Uh, not in much detail, but yeah. Okay. Enough, enough, yeah. I think. I don't, I don't know the detail. I don't know how much they are separate from just what I would call a regular steroid. Yep, okay. I don't know what the real separation is there. Okay, I do. Go on. Okay. Um, so steroids are hormones okay. or altered versions. Yep, like testosterone. That can be an anabolic, that's an anabolic steroid, yep. Um, and other steroids are altered versions of testosterone or similar. Some are altered versions of DHT or which is dihydrotestosterone or okay. <clears throat> sometimes progesterone, other hormones. Mm-hmm. But they're hormones or very similar compounds to hormones. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's hormones that are specifically cho- chosen to be used and injected by people trying to build extra muscle because they're anabolic hormones and they're hormones that are related to building muscle and strength in the body. Mm-hmm. So when you inject ex- super physiological, like extra high, <clears throat> excuse me, doses of these hormones, you get enhanced muscle building effects. The the thing about it though is those hormones like testosterone, progesterone, and these altered versions, they don't they're not muscular selective t- compounds. They're not muscularly muscularly, sorry, syllables. Mu- um, selective so they have other impacting effects on other tissues in the body like there are testosterone has a lot of effects on loads of, like even the brain mm-hmm. and loads of different organs what, and anger <laughs> for what one maybe yeah for some people yeah yeah for some people yeah stereotypical like roid rage oh well, yeah that for some people that's a thing for some people that's, that's not a thing. It. yeah yeah but hormones affect more than just your muscles so what SARMs are, that stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. Uh, okay. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing a lot today. I, I too am coughing. I, don't, I think we've... Maybe we've given each other <coughs> the Delta the the Delta variant. <laughs> the variant. <laughs> the variant. Go on anyway, SARMs, yeah. Um, selective. Selective androgen. So it is selective to androgen, androgen receptors. receptors so so it's, they're more receptors. specific than steroids. Steroid hormones affect the muscles, yes, but other things, yes. Uh-huh. These selective androgen receptor modulators, modulator means activator, so it selectively activates the androgen, which is... It, it's hard to explain, but androgen androgens affect strength and muscle and have negative side effects too to be fair it has negative side effects too it's related to bad skin and true acne and that yeah. yeah other things as well but anyway um these are supposed to be compounds that only affect the muscles and tell them to do the growing without affecting other areas of the body mm-hmm. i'll tell you for a fact it does not work mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not how it works okay there's no free rides you can't just take this compound and it just... So, the... inherently, it's bullshit because of the name. Kind of, yeah, yeah because it's... It, it's uh, not even true. Oh, well, maybe it is true. I don't know the actual ins and outs and technicalities of it that much because this is not my real specific area, but I don't know if it's because it doesn't only activate the androgen receptors or if when you activate the androgen receptors, that does other things than just builds muscle. So, knock-on effect. Yes. It could be because they like to hide... know which way it is, to be honest. The marketers, they like to hide behind the blinds a bit on them ones, don't they? But and you are like, right that yeah. what they class as a SARM is not very specific no. and very debatable. Some things that do different things, they're like, oh, SAR, it's, it's, it's SARMs. Because that's become like the code name or like the brand. And so brand even name, though, name. even despite it might not be living up to what it says, would you argue that it's still safer? No. Better? No. In a, no. In no. anything better than, than steroids no, if you're going to pick one? No. Way, way worse. Way worse. Never do it. Okay. Why? Such a bad idea. Why? This is what Tom wanted us to talk about because he said that in his opinion he's seen everywhere. Because I said, oh, Will's coming late to do News of the Week. He said, oh, I know some news. I keep seeing that loads of these kids are taking Psalms. What do you think to that? If, from my limited knowledge and on uh, any kind of PDEs, if I was going to jump on gear, steroids, whatever, it would just be a raw base level of testosterone and just do it as hormonally the basic, most basic way possible. And from what I basically know, that's basically just as few complications as possible, right? Is the best idea? Um, Yes, if you were going to do something like that, that would be the best idea to start off with, Mm. just especially at the beginning. So that you knew where your side effects were coming from. Because if you injected two true, drugs and yeah. it didn't go well, you wouldn't know why. Yeah, true. If you just take if you one thing, you'll know how you narrowed down the variables. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to start taking drugs, you don't want to start mixing them necessarily. This Day one. Pretty, yeah. Just potions. And <laughs> this is adding in. And, and there's counter-arguments to that. Uh-huh. There's counter-arguments to that. 
But yeah, yeah, it'd be I, the safe. I know people that have jumped on gear that will I've the, the the two common schools of thought that I hear from people is one is I'm glad I I'm either I'm glad I waited or I wish I'd waited longer. Basically, that it was a good thing that I waited, or I wish I'd just done it sooner and smashed <laughs> more sooner. I didn't think you were gonna say that? Yeah, that literally, it's about 50-50 split the house because some people are like, well, yeah, look, I mean, I got to the end of my training, and then for like three years. I just wasn't progressing because I'd basically hit my ceiling. I was like a decade deep into training and it was just going slow and it was boring and my joints hurt. So I started smashing gear and now it's fun. And that's like the other side that I hear as well. So it's like, well, yeah. And so I think from those points of views, I think... It's a huge oversimplification, but yeah. Yeah. Because there is side effects. Yeah. And complications that you have to accept or contend with. Because what did Tom have to say about sounds? Um, he said he wasn't entirely sure. That's why he was asking. Mm. He wanted to know if they were safe and stuff like this because people act like they're safe because of the name. People think they're very inviting. It. It's, much, it's much more like, like people like pop oh, it's this not and get big. It's not illegal. Yeah. Yeah. So people are like really, it only affects the muscles. It doesn't do other things, and it's not steroids, and it's not illegal. I'm in. Are they no, not you should illegal? not be in. What? Sorry. Are they not illegal? Mm, most of them are not illegal. I don't know about... But in they're this, not like over the counter. In this country, I don't know what the legalities are or whether they're over the counter or not. You can definitely buy them online, but you can buy all sorts online. <laughs> um, in America, you can just buy them. I don't, in America, I've you not can just really looked buy into it in this country to know if a, you can a tiger. Them, but. In the same day, you could probably go and buy a tiger and a shotgun in America. Yeah, you can, especially in Texas. So, well, not even with, with America. <laughs> yep, you're definitely right. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom, isn't it? Freedom, kill your neighbor. Um... So people think they're safe and they think they're newer and everybody knows that steroids like build muscle but it's kind of bad kind of thing. People are like, oh, this new thing sounds... But no, it's a terrible idea. Number one, they do have side effects. They all have side effects. Uh-huh. Um, they all have different side effects. Some of them affect the liver. Some of them affect the kidneys. Some of them affect your cholesterol levels, which is not good for your heart. Some of them affect your blood thickness, which is not good for... Like we were talking about before the show, John Meadows just died of some yeah. kind of like blood complication. And, and we're talking about this purely physiologically. I mean, then I guess we could consider the moral, ethical, psychological dilemmas and issues that could come with such a yeah hormonal change if you were doing it with like um, tests or something like that. Or if it's not hormonal, but you don't know what the factors that could change could be, then there's the factor that you hope and know is going to change, which is that you're going to get a lot bigger, but that down the road usually implies some kind of negative mental something or other when he, when you inevitably, especially if you're enhanced, because then obviously there's inevitably an end to that, that you then have to come back to being a mere mortal again, as it were, <laughs> which I don't think is fun. Yeah, some people don't. Some people stay on forever. And die at 40, 50 like John Meadows. Well, <laughs> I don't know. No, it's true. I mean, if you look at people like, obviously, what was, uh, uh, like Arnold was... I think 15 or something when he first started taking gear okay. and he's definitely still taking gear now and has obviously just done it safely throughout his life and had kids and this, that and the other. So it can be done for sure. Hasn't but... he also had like four heart attacks? Yeah, for sure. Okay, then yeah, safe yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, must be safe. So like he's grand. I mean, yeah, grand, yeah. I, I think all those four heart attacks happened in the last like three or four years of his life. So okay, I mean, yeah. who knows yeah. what the variable is there? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? I've got no idea. No. Definitely, it's definitely not all the <laughs> monkey juice. Um, yeah. No, but this is it. Like, I mean, like, yeah, it kind of might not be, be for sure. Genetic. Yeah, people, but... that does happen to people. I'm only half speculating slash joking. <laughs> um, but Psalms, no, not safe. Um, the votes out. D- does does do have side effects? They all have side effects. They all have different side effects. Um, there's not many human trials at actual decent doses, so nobody even knows really what most of the side effects are because they're too new. There's no long-term studies for any of them ever because they've not existed long enough. At least with steroids, they've been studied since like 1960 or 70, and we actually know what you can do and what you can get away with and which ones are safe and yeah, which ones aren't yeah. safe and what the recovery protocols are and what the dangers are. With these SARMs, you just don't know, and it's just not a good idea. Do they work in terms of... Do we know people that have taken SARMs and gotten big? They definitely build muscles. So they, yeah, okay, so they do definitely. that job. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. To what extent versus steroids? Unknown, because there's not really as many studies yet. They Most of the SARM studies use tiny amounts. Um, there's some studies using slightly more amounts, but not, not loads. Yeah, interesting. Um, so they're not really studied well enough, but side effects do show up. There's no free rides. They do sh- it does shut down your natural testosterone levels. It can affect your liver, kidneys. Same as steroids. It's not just affecting the muscles. Definitely not. Usual, usual <clears throat> bullshit. Pretty yeah. similar to steroids, yeah. to be honest. It's pretty similar. It's all. It's the same side effects. It's the same 
normal effects, really. It's just different versions of steroids, basically. It's like a newer version. Um, is it safer? Unknown. Um, if, if anything's unknown, that's a no to me. If anything's, yeah, agree. That, that's I'd why when, so. you, when, when, if you said, should you take steroids or Psalms? If, you, if, you, if you're going to pick one, you should pick steroids because we actually know yeah. how to do that safely. And if you end up in the hospital with issues, the doctors know what to do. Yeah, I wouldn't have said it, but if you, if you had me put a reason behind why, that would probably be it. Wouldn't be it's the only it's, reason. It's tried and true. Neither are safe. It's belt I'm not saying either are a good yeah. idea and neither are safe and they've both got side effects. They both cause issues. But if you get issues from steroids, we actually know what the issues are and doctors actually know how to treat these issues and fix it. And Psalms just no one's got any fucking clue what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So it's just, it's too unknown to be a thing, in my opinion. It's just not, not worth doing. Don't do Psalms, Tom. No, don't do Psalms, kids. Stay in school. Stay small. Read books, stay small. Um, stay natty, bro. Next thing then, Will, what do you think about the Olympics? How do you feel? I enjoy the Olympics. Do you really? I do. I am. Um, I struggle to watch a bit of it because I don't really have a TV in that. And so I kind of just catch the highlights. Yeah, I've watched some highlights. So I, d- I feel a bit um, negligent in my, in my uh, like, I don't know, Brit- British schism or sportsmanness okay, that I haven't really been watching. Mm. But um, I'm excited that it's just like a thing that's happening, you know, in the world. And okay, the, yeah. The um, collaborations are happening and mm. athletes have been able to come together and do things. I think that's nice and exciting for for a change. Um, I think a lot of it, I think I think some, uh, some things of it have gone, have gone a bit wrong this time around, but I think you can kind of expect that after all this business. Uh, like what? I saw a couple of the events that had to get like, rescheduled or like something went wrong with them there was a swimming event that was quite interesting where they put set the gun off too early and half the athletes set off and the others couldn't because there was something blocking their way and like things like that like they really i'm like what do you do with that race then because then like half the athletes have gone and have give have done their first attempt you know and have given their like 100 percent effort and then half of them haven't it's like what how, what are you going to do like can you do redo that because then that's yeah, not fair yeah. on the first no, half I don't know. yeah i guess redo what do you do you yeah redo i don't know but in general yeah i like yeah weightlifting specifically for me oh do you? yeah 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 there's been some cool moments this year around so far have there yeah some world records uh some interesting world records liu Jun is um He's only ever really competing against himself. There's another chap that sometimes takes it. But uh, he had a back issue, so I was kind of edging my seat watching him a bit because he's, like, just the front runner of weightlifting. He's insane what that man can do, like, athletic-wise. It's crazy. So he's a a weightlifter, which means he competes in the clean and jerk and the snatch are his two movements. Uh, We've discussed these a bit before on the podcast. The clean and jerk, you're like stood over the bar, um, narrow hands, you stand it up, flick it over and catch it on your throat, yeah. <laughs> squat it up and then throw it over your head. And it, I mean, like I've held like decent amounts of weight up here after getting it off the floor and grinding the hell out of it. And just knowing what he's held like over his head and how much weight it is, it's just insane. Mm-hmm. And so like those kind of feats of strength, I just love watching. But yeah, he blew his back out. So I think he's retiring. Wow. Yeah, which is... But it, that makes sense. I think he's 39 or something and has been weightlifting since he was like four. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Cool stuff going on. What about you? Interesting. Um, I'll be honest. People at home should cover their ears. I think fuck the Olympics. Yeah, I, mean, I could tell you didn't like I just, it. No, I don't like the Olympics. Why? I just don't like any of it really. I mean... I, I have some problems with the ethics behind like this says okay back to steroid use I, I would prefer it if they went okay take whatever you want let's see what fucking humans can do let's see if you can jump to the moon and back you know because <laughs> everyone's yeah. on steroids yeah when you're asking who's on steroids everyone's on steroids yeah. so let's just cl- clean slate stop trying to make it clean in that direction yeah. because it isn't and yeah. it won't work <laughs> let people use what they use yeah. and, and then it will just be the Olympics what it already yeah. is, but without any of these lies and shit. And then people won't get found out for being cheats and then get cancelled when... It wasn't at the Olympics, but the Tour de France, didn't they have to go back 14 places from first to find 18. someone not on steroids? I 18. Eight, I think 18, yeah. Everyone's on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> just let people... And that guy probably just passed the test. He's just like, few. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But go on. 
Um, yeah, I just yeah, I feel the same as that. Is, is that the main it's, thing? It's 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 a it's a part of it. It's not only the steroids. Everyone's cheating. <laughs> Even like the Russians and the Chinese, they have state sponsored like government. Even the pretty little females that don't programs. look like they do. Yeah, yeah. that. Um, so that's a part of it. Another part of it is. I, I just it, everywhere the Olympics goes, all I see is destruction afterwards. Literally. Okay, I've never looked at this. So you know, if you go around the countries where the Olympics has been, mm. there's just all the there's desolate wastelands. What about like the Olympic Park? Yeah, yeah, where companies have put in governments and countries. Sorry, have put in millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds into this thing, and then it just turns into nothing. Mm. does it um, all I see is destruction in the athletes lives as well really everyone gets depression I've never heard one good story come out of the Olympics people enter the Olympics everyone that loses gets depression yeah. the people that win also get depression because they they achieve their life goal they get the gold medal it's good they're happy for about a week and then they realize that actually they get nothing they actually didn't get paid no none of the athletes get paid are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, this that, is that's disgusting. True. There's not even prize money, so who gets all the money? The Olympic Committee, and they do, don't they? They're making all this money out of these athletes. That I, I really appreciate the athletic performance. I think the the feats of human performance are incredible. How fast people can run, they can swim. Some people throw shit. Some people do flips. <laughs> and stuff. It's crazy, and I understand. I understand. Some people do th- uh, nice. people do flips, and it's, like, shh, it's it's a bit mad, isn't it? I I, I respect all that. Um, some of the spots suck. Let's be honest. <laughs> some of them aren't real. Let's be honest. Some are not real. Some are not real. Some are not real. What, what was one of them? One was like shooting, cycling, just like not a thing. Yeah, not three a thing. and one. Yeah, but like not three and one that should be a three and one. It could. It might as well have been like shooting chess and like. Pe- <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Some of the sports are a bit silly. We must say they're a bit silly. <laughs> it's, it's gotten a bit out. We of must say, hey guys, listen, whoever's in charge, a bit silly. With what's Do in and what's not. About it. With what's in and what's not, it's a bit silly. Do about um, but I just think not just none of the athletes just get paid and they just all get depression. Literally, all the ones that win gold, you just hear all these stories about how they all just get depression. I think this they is just it, isn't it? Look I, back at Asda. I don't think there are many people on the earth you could find that are more down to earth, hardworking, and just genuinely about their own shit than Olympians. Because man, those people just graft, you know, like because again, they started super fucking young. Yeah, for nothing. They're doing that shit before time. school every day, and then going to school and not talking about it and just being like doing it you know there was and then yeah i think the flip side of that is that the rest of the olympics is that it is just this global conglomerate isn't it that's designed for money making it's as a money well. making machine these of course days. i think is. in the past yeah it might have been like oh look our country versus yours so that's what definitely started as yeah. athletic little bring the world together some athletics but 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 really it's steroids and lies and the governments are in on it and destruction and everyone gets depression and have you seen the the gymnastics scandal this year no. Like, the, the the gymnastics coaches have got, like, 300 counts of paedophilia against them from, what? for touching all the girls. And, like, now the fucking coaches are touching the girls as well. And in countries that are not ours, like in China and Russia and Cuba, they take kids out of school and put them into these Olympic training Rouge, I was young, like I was saying, since he was four, yeah. This is what I'm saying. Um, there's a there's a UFC fighter, um, or I think he's retired now, called Yoel Romero. He came from, he was a Cuban-like wrestler. Um, and he was taken out of school and put into this Cuban wrestling camp because people were asking him like, "How are you so hardcore?" And he's like, "Saying, oh, it was the wrestling camp." Oh, was he the one that grew up wrestling with bears and shit? Oh no, that's the that's the Dagestani okay. Khabib guy. Um, but this guy was in the, like the Cuban wrestling camps, and he he said like, "Imagine, I'm getting I'm going to get the numbers slightly wrong, but imagine there's 200 kids in this Cuban wrestling camp. Only two of them." get to go to the Olympics every four years. The other 198 of them get nothing. And he said they all have to wrestle and fight each other non-stop to see who's the best. And they tried to poison each other. They used to try and injure each other so that they, someone would be out of training because so, there's only two places. Just that's just mental. crazy, dude. That is crazy. All the stories are just crazy from all these sports and people devote their lives to it. And then, yeah, you win a gold medal, but then you can just throw a stick really far. I mean, what did it do? And then you're just no reward for this. I think that that there's a very interesting philosophical and ethical dilemma in there about the sort of yin and yang between like where you, where you should find comfortability between how much to strive for and how little you should do kind of thing in life. I mean, like how little you should sit around and just be comfortable with life and 
it and how much you should try and progress and beat what has come before or something. Where you should sit between like, um, I don't know, pro- progressionism, progressivism, whatever that okay. would be, and like um, being and like, but I guess a, a Buddhist or something would be the other end of the spectrum, wouldn't it? Okay, I understand. What Do you know mean. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it is a balance. Yeah, mm. it is a balance, and. So it's, it's not the Olympic sports I'm against or the athletes. I think the sports are good. I like the athletic performance. I think the athletes are, mad, are amazing I think the people. athletes are the, the thing. They're amazing. That, They're yeah. amazing people that do crazy feats of all this wild stuff. I just think the actual just Olympic committee and the show and the countries and the debates and all the lies and all the money and none of it goes to the... And I just think it's all filthy. I think that's true. And now they're touching girls as well. Like Especially now you've said that. Yeah, I didn't know that. It's all awful. Because they're, they're the things... Because, like, well, this. like this, like, none of what you've just said sounds in any way surprising about, like, um, the money... Or, yeah, say just the money or something. But, like, you just don't think about it, do you? Like, I wouldn't have ever thought that. You asked me about the Olympics. I'm like, yeah, I like the Olympics for all the good reasons. And those kind of bad reasons, they don't necessarily occur to you. I just Googled Olympic gymnastics and it suggested to me sex scandal nice it's come up wikipedia usa gymnastics sex abuse scandal mm, yeah that's not very good is it what the fuck are we doing yeah what are we doing <laughs> you're making these girls do all these flips and you're fucking abusing them as well it's all filth i'll tell you what does it's fucking awful. annoy me actually is I, I, and something that i find myself doing quite a lot on tiktok because tiktok's got my ass now i haven't got which TikTok, is very annoying so i, I know don't go don't comment on this <laughs> obviously at the minute there's a lot of highlight reels of the olympics on the tiktoks and that and there are just so yeah. many fucking comments about the females and like what they're wearing or just something and i always just try and go on and make sure i put a comment about their fucking athletic performance the things that they're there well, to you've talk been about online. no it just pisses me you're off pissing dude. into the wind it's there, super annoying you? yeah <laughs> pissing into the wind because well, i think nice comments on tiktok you'd be ridiculous because i think on like even even <laughs> on like and it's going to be hard to say this without sounding like an arsehole, but like on the smallest level, I, I can remember a specific time when I've been doing something in the gym before and someone's walked past as I've been mid-set and, and shouted at me, show off, like that. And it's just like, fuck off, please, because I'm working at my capacity and I'm working hard to progress the shit that I'm doing and you're trying to villainize me for me working on me. How about fuck you, guy? Do you know what I mean? Well, that like, affected you. It fucking it annoys me. To me, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. I would have just yeah, like that annoys me. Set. No, that annoys me, man. Like, just let me exist, man. Let me let me breathe oxygen. Were you showing off? What were you doing? I was doing split squats with the thirty eights. Is that showing off? What were you doing that made it made someone say? Who said show off? Like a random member or like a staff member? I could tell. Yeah, I, I know exactly. It was, she was like a a, a woman. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe was she flirting and you took it badly? <laughs> you, but, and you, did, you, you should have this, just this isn't the point Connor this isn't the point Connor this isn't the point Connor these poor females at the Olympics <laughs> bring, bring it home but do you, do you see what I'm saying though I do yeah. yeah and you know some of the Olympic females yeah. are actually forced to wear those tiny little shorts I know this is um, exactly that is exactly what I'm those saying those are countries is that they're like that's the uniform it's like why is that the uniform exactly why is they that the fucking uniform because themselves. you've decided that's a uniform because of paedophilia in gymnastics yeah it's because right. they'll get more views if it's like that they're trying to make it like fucking Instagram. I know. So everyone has to have their asses out. It's yeah, it pisses that. So that kind of shit pisses me off. Like, um, and I, I think it's funny. It's weird how I got it, like looked into that a little bit because one of my celebrity crushes is Simone Miles for sure. She's just the coolest. I don't really know who that is. She's like one of the front runners for gymnastics. Yeah. Well, arguably she's the she best the, athlete in the world. Is the she minute. the lady that's dropped out? Of the Olympics this time. Yeah. This her, time. I actually do know. Yeah, there's been some shit going on with her and some other team members and whatnot. Bless her and whatnot. She's um, on the gymnastics thing. It's, it's all going wrong. Oh, everything's it's going all wrong. going wrong. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's just a shit time for a lot of them, I think. Um, for the pressure, the emotional berating that comes I mean, with it. Lot- I mean, because the other side of it as well is you've got like the the coaches and everyone that's on your side and is about that life. Yeah. That's where the pressure and that comes from. And then everyone in the public you have this weird persona that you're some kind of prick or something like i kind of used to know this um team gb uh, gymnastics guy that used to come to the gym and we used to train together and he'd just do like handstands and backflips in his warm-up and shit and because it is just that's part of his thing people like show off yeah yeah exactly (laughs) and they just think it's just like no i've just worked harder than you go away stop being stop villainizing me for your shortcomings in life go away man go away (laughs) that's not me i'm talking about you know what i mean like it does annoy me. Yeah, so I'm sorry for being negative about the Olympics, and I think that it could be a nice thing, and I do like. No, I think you, you, no, it's real points. Other points, I just think, oh god, you know, you know what? I, you know what I think about the Olympics. Hmm. 
You name for me, you tell me one good story, one positive story from the Olympics. Okay. I'll wait. <laughs> this is what I think. Just anyone, please. Just, just because I've just named like seven from this year, mm. like negative stories. Just, just one, please. A good story. Anyone who's happy. I mean, some people won some gold medals and they looked happy. I get it on TV. Could that be a but, a testimony to news in general, though? Because that is how be. news is wired. It could be. Mm. But I also think the Olympic athletes right. just don't get much out of it. I do think you're right. Yeah. They just don't get much out of it, do they? Some people break through to the yeah. they break through the media sphere. Like, let's name some famous Olympic athletes. Usain Bolt. There's Jessica Ennis. There's Tom Daly, the diver guy. Uh, who else is there? There's Michael Phelps, the swimmer. Are you talking British? Uh, yeah, but yeah. in general. Yeah. Name, but there's not many. They're people that have broken through and become an actual celebrity yeah, yeah. by having a personality or being good looking or whatever they do. <laughs> you know, you know what these celebrities do. Or if it's something, yeah. But, yeah. but how many? But how many people go to the Olympics every year? It's thousands. And, and like also, five people. That Jess Ennis work. went to my school, and that's why we're talking about her. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Because she lives she's Sheffield. Famous, and a yeah. two, I could go and knock on her front door. If you, oh, you know, okay, like that's yeah. why we know about her first okay. of all. Oh, okay. Um, in fact, there's been a lot to come out of Yorkshire. A lot. Mm. Uh, there was a tennis player come out of my school as well. Actually, thinking about it, but yeah, yeah, yeah like I don't know. Um, I think those kind of things could be cleared up a lot. At the I agree because with you. you're right. Because the people. Sorry, I was going to say I agree with you. We want the all steroid Olympics. We want. I want the all steroid Olympics. Is what we, I, want. I want to see what crazy ass, ass athletic humans can do, which we already know because they are. But like, I mean, if you if you take someone like Usain Bolt, the fastest man on the planet, although has he just been superseded? I don't know. But whatever. If you don't think that the fastest plan man on the on the planet is on steroids, who is on steroids? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if he's on steroids or not, but I know that no, people no, no, who are no. on steroids can't catch him. That's what I'm saying. If, <laughs> who, if the fastest man on the planet isn't on steroids, no one's on steroids. So, of course, everyone's on steroids. A lot of people are. I don't know about our athletes, to be honest. I don't really know about the Americans and to what extent that is, but I know that all the other countries are. I'm just saying not necessarily specific. Well, basically, the rule they say at the Olympics is if you place podium, you're on gear. Like, so it's not necessarily the point of, like, who the person is. Like, specifically, has that person taken gear? It's if they've won at the Olympics, you're winning. You've, you've won your event in the world. That means that out of all the variables of genetics of in uh, and of uh, added supplementation, like, out of steroids and whatnot, you are the best. So, obviously, you're on steroids. Do you know what I mean? You, it could be an argument. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily a foolproof test, but it could be an if argument. you can test everyone that's lost and they're all on steroids, <laughs> <laughs> this guy that fucking won isn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and there is ways to... And people will be like, yeah, but drug testing. But there's ways to get around drug testing. Oh, for sure. You can just say no. And and the media can't publish it. If they rock up to Usain Bolt's training facility and go, we're here to do your test. And he goes, no, come come back in two weeks. They they can't say no and they can't publish that he said no. They just come uh, back. I don't know. It depends which agency is doing the drug testing for what the rules are. For sure. But you can get around it. Yeah, yeah, you can is the point. There's yeah. ways you can get around mm-hmm. it. They try and do it as good as they can. Like, um, I like mixed martial arts fighting and like the UFC a little bit and stuff like this. And they have strict drug, drug testing. I, that would be one of the sports I think it would be less likely to find someone on... Yeah, but loads of people are on steroids. Of course. But... They are. Yeah, yeah. They, they have strict drug testing. <laughs> they have um, United States anti-doping agency, USADA. Oh, it does Random matter. drug tests, can... all the athletes, all the time. Especially mm-hmm. the most jacked ones and the guys that are winning. Well, there are things that fly by under their radars anyway. Yeah, and, there and, the, and there's stuff you can use to and there's flush stuff you can system. use to flush the system within like 24 hours. Yep, there is, yeah. Every, everything you can get. Yeah. There's, yeah, and some people do get caught. Yeah. Some people do get caught. Some people are idiots. That's, they do, that's why. That some people don't get caught. Um, all right, then. There was an article in Men's Health. Everything you need to know about pre-workouts. What do you think we need to know about pre I'm, I've not got the article. I don't care what they've got to say, to be honest. What do you think we need to know about pre-workouts? I say sleep well and eat well. <laughs> so you're not a big fan? I think it's not necessary, but it can be fun sometimes. I've I agree. Them. I'm also not a fan. I've used them. Um, if you need more than a coffee and more than a little bit yeah. of caffeine to get yourself going for a workout, you like need to get to bed you, earlier. You need better recovery and rest. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Most of the other things apart from caffeine that are in pre-workouts are pointless anyway. BCA is pointless. Um, B, B, B vitamins, pointless pretty much. 
Nitric oxide booster is pretty much pointless. It basically is just a fuck ton of caffeine. Beta alanine, pretty much pointless. That's just makes you feel tingly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a mild central nervous system stimulant, so it does have an actual mild stimulatory effect. It's like caffeine, but like imagine weaker. Mm. So it does. It's doesn't. It's not only a tingle. It's another little buzz. And I will caffeine. say as well, when I have used it, I think it can work to or against you. Um, it, w- w- when I've had it and, and just gone like, I'm smashing arms and delts and chest and shit. I'm like, cool, let's get a nice little pump on, shift some weight around, that's mm-hmm. nice. But I've taken pre-workout before and tried squatting and like deadlifting and oh, doing really? things that I like close my eyes when I'm getting under the bar and like focus, you know? And it just, like, okay. I get in and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm tingling. Too and jittery. Just, yeah, it just, it's, it's too Sometimes much. Sometimes they're as strong as 10 coffees in one go though and it's just a bit it's much. It's insane, yeah. It's just a bit much. Um, so that's what that's what we think about pre-workouts. Sometimes it's a bit much. Maybe chill on it. Daily Express had an article, how to get rid of visceral fat. Visceral, okay. visceral fat's internal fat around your organs. What do we think? Lose fat. Yep. In Enjoy. general. <laughs> that, yep. Calorie deficit. All right, deficit. next. Yep, that's good, yep. You're exactly right, Well, yep. I mean, there's, it's just you just get rid of it normally. Yeah. It's just same calorie deficit. Calorie deficit in any of the ways we've discussed previously. Please check out our podcast. <laughs> Every single podcast, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, or exercise. And visceral fat's actually some of the fastest fat to come off of the body. You know, if someone's got abdominal obesity. Because it's the least healthiest, right? Yeah, so your body doesn't like, even really rid. want it. We don't like it. Yeah, no, your body doesn't even want it. it get, you get rid of it pretty fast, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> So that's nice and basic. Less death involved with fat. Uh, that's nice and basic. Uh, I've got a little something to read out to you here, which I thought was quite interesting. What was that? Ultra runner, Timothy Olsen. I know Tim. Do you? I think so. Okay. I don't know. Um, just posted the fastest known time for running across the Pacific Crest Trail. 2,650 miles. That's insane. Took 51 days and 16 hours. I can't even compute those numbers as to like where the, what the what yeah. the scale is. There. I've got it for you. Don't worry. Average running time per day seventeen hours. Uh, Average running time uh, per day seventeen hours. That's too many hours. Used eight pairs of shoes. <laughs> eight, eight, five to seven thousand calories per day to fuel it. Jesus, and only one pair of feet. His feet must have been. I imagine they're like gnarled little. Yeah. I don't even know. Is what. it? Is this? Where was this specific? Where is that? Uh, the route stretches over 2,650 miles, starting at the U.S.-Mexico border all the way to Canada through California, Oregon, and Washington, crossing deserts, mountain oh, ranges, states, and everything yeah. in between. Why well, pick the nice ones? Okay, not not the, the, the Tim I was thinking of. That's an ultra mile. Fifty-one days. Um, it doesn't say how fast the previous fastest person was. That's um, uphill as well. He went from south to north. <laughs> and, and I'll say by the end of it, his beard and hair looked strong. <laughs> so he went full for a scump. Uh, well, I'll just show you. For listeners at home, you'll have to Google it. He really did just run across the country. <laughs> Timothy Olsen. Uh, oh, no. Running. I'll just put it. <laughs> yes, here we go. It's worked. Put Forrest Gump. It's worked perfectly. Oh, no, wait. Maybe his hair and beard is always powerful. <laughs> okay. Because I saw a picture of him looking extraordinarily long-haired and long-bearded and looking disheveled. But apparently he's just... He always has long hair and a long beard anyway, but he did look quite disheveled anyway. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting, he, he said it's taking, in this in this interview, weeks to recover. Oh, yeah. He said usually one ultra marathon takes one week for him to recover from, and then he's, he's back. He said... It didn't say, actually, that I saw. I only... I didn't, read it like dissect the article massively but i didn't see that it said or don't remember that it said how long it was actually after he'd finished from when this article was when he was being interviewed but it seemed to be like weeks later he said he's just got really bad energy levels and he just needs to sleep all the time that's insane i i've heard of things like that when yeah like people sleeping for like two days just wrecked himself for yeah. 51 days i mean imagine straight, 50 and that you said the average was 17 hours 16 to 17 hours per day, it says, yeah. That's keep, insane. Keeping yeah. pace. That's, that's, what, that's literally what it says. It says he averaged 51 miles per day. I bet it'd be really that's interesting two marathons as a well. Day, every day for 51 days. Yeah, that's too many marathons. One of those is too many. And it would be interesting after something like that to sit that bloke down and be like, what do you think about like life now, let's say? Like you've had, you've had two marathons a day worth of time mm-hmm. to think. Mm-hmm. And what have you been thinking about, mm-hmm. bro? There's a re- what, under, whilst under all this immense physical trauma, what have you been thinking about for that all those 
hours. Yep. If if anybody really likes that kind of stuff, there's a fantastic interview on Joe Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan Experience, with a lady called Courtney DeWalter, who run literally Courtney with a C and then DeWalter, D-E, and then Walter as it sounds. Um, she won the Moab 240, which is 240 miles through the Mojave oh. Desert. She did it in like two days and slept for like one hour and one minute. She ran 240 miles with like an hour and a minute's rest. Um, and she she had a support van and one person jumped out of it, one of her friends, and ran a marathon with her and jumped back in. Then another person jumped out and ran a marathon with her and then jumped back in just nonstop. So she had a different person. She said sometimes she listens to music, sometimes she doesn't. The story she tells is insane about what it was like. She said so that was 250 miles. 240 miles, yeah, through the desert. <laughs> Night and day, non-stop. One hour rest that, only. In two days, she... Just ran a human non-stop. On her own. Pa- she, she came first by 10 hours as well. She could have literally gone to a hotel, gone to sleep for six, woke up, had a breakfast, and then strolled across after a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't. She just, she just hammered it. She just literally hammered it. That's insanity. She, honestly, no. She said she said by like two thirds of the way through, she was hallucinating, and she said she always gets a similar hallucination where there's a man sat on a log with a fiddle that floats next to her. So she said she listened for a good while to this man playing his fiddle, and she knows it's a hallucination, but she was going crazy. She said for the last couple of miles, she'd fully gone blind, and could like something had gone wrong with the blood pressure in her eyes, where she, she was fully blind. And had fallen over multiple times due to being blind and was bleeding and literally could just kind of see the blur of this straight road with like the people down the edge at the finish kind of thing. And she was just stumbling and crawling. I want to see footage of this. Blind over the thing. They do it every year and you can watch it on the internet. I was tracking it through. You can you can just go on this thing and each race has got like a little GPS tracker and it tells you where they are. So just like while it's going on, you can just log on to it a couple see of times. See who's dying. Day. Yeah, and you see who's asleep, in how far, Moab who's desert. winning, where people are. Absolutely wild. And it's a fantastic interview. It's like two or three hours long. I'll watch if, that. You're in, if you're into running, um, I, I listen to it while running myself. Excellent motivation. And, and she does not eat healthy. She eats loads of Mexican food. <laughs> she eats loads of like cheese and like... Well, carbs, I, I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> carbs, yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting though. There's other people that do it who are like fat adapted. They don't eat any carbs really. They do like oh, keto, weird, long yeah. distance running. Because yeah. you run out of carbs in your body. You yeah. can only do like two hours worth of like True. hardcore running and then you're out of carbs. You've got to keep constantly fueling. Some people get fat adapted and then they, they burn through body fat quite a lot while they're on it and... Feel okay. Different people do it different ways. Some people eat healthy. Some people use a lot of gels. She just eats loads of Mexican food. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. W- women do well as well. Like men do faster marathon times, but women do better ultra marathon times, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. When, when the distances get really long, women start to take over again. Interesting. interesting is there what? Is there a shorter time... Is there a shorter scale but before 26 miles that women know. are faster in? better. No, men men are, men are faster up to there, and then by I, well, all I know is sprinting. Men what are is an ultra marathon? Is that two hundred forty? No, um, I think there's different classifications. Like I've seen some ultra marathons. There where are hundred I've seen. I've seen them way less than a hundred. I've seen them like yeah, th- yeah. I think people just call things ultra marathons these days. I don't know what the technical classification <laughs> True. is, but it's more than one marathon. It might be two or more marathons. Okay. or something. but yeah, hundred miles definitely an ultra. But yeah, at marathon paces, men are faster, aren't they? At sprinting and 400 meters, men are faster. More muscle mass, more yeah, power. Um, but when it gets to ultras, women women overtake when the distances get more further. I don't know whether it's smaller body mass, whether it's more efficiency through muscles, mm-hmm. whether it's better ability to burn body fat, whether it's... I don't know, it might be just a coincidence. It goes to show, though, just how sick humans are at just moving you can't through. imagine it can you no it's brilliant we're one of the only animals that can do it as well aren't we yeah Supposedly, yeah, like, yeah i mean it in african contrast painted dogs to, isn't there what that sweat as well yeah you, that can sweat while running yeah yeah every other animal would overheat that's why mm-hmm. in the past they think one of our hunting methods would be persistence hunting yeah where we'd slowly just jog just after being a animal. clingy bitch ah yeah <laughs> stab <laughs> it in the ankle going for the kill with down. Down. <laughs> yeah that's hilarious <laughs> yeah that is hilarious. Clingy kill. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting, isn't it? That Shout is out to Timothy Olsen. That's yeah. flipping hardcore. 51 days, 17 hours a day. Timothy wins. I bet my, you know, if I if I run more than two or three times a week, my feet get injured and fall to bits. Literally that get... could be, and I might not be exaggerating, because I've not done much running in my life, that could be more 
running in one race like that that I, than I have ever accumulatively done, as in setting off for our run, you know, and timed it. Bro, no offense, you won't run two thousand six hundred fifty miles in your life. Two hundred forty. Two thousand six hundred and fifty miles. Wait, what? Who was? Wait, what? What, what was that? Oh, that's for that guy, that's isn't it? That's how far that 50. guy just went. Two thousand. Sorry, I was talking back miles. about the the other lady, but yeah, that's insane. Oh, no. you were talking two forty miles. Yeah, I was talking two forty. Oh, I think even oh. that. I think even that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Sorry, this guy's on two thousand six hundred. Yeah, he. That no guy, way. I will never. Yeah, the more I have two forty in my yeah. life. If I die at ninety, uh, I will never have run two thousand. <laughs> I don't know if I've run 240 miles. I can't remember how many 10Ks I've run. This is what I'm you know, like when you think about it like that. 10K, call it five miles. It's not, but let's call it it. Mm, I don't know. Oh, well, you shredded. Who's asking questions? I, yeah, I don't like running. I've done more than. I always say that, like. I don't know how, how many 5Ks I've done. It would kill me, but if I started running right now, I could. I reckon I could do 10 miles and just go, you know? Yeah, you actually surprised me on that tough mudder thing you did. Uh, like, like you I got do- injured. Let's say that you got injured, True. but you actually slugged it through. Yeah, without yeah. training. Because there was like, um, there was a thirteen mile one that we did for that that I didn't train for and just did. You were injured, but you made it. I, oh, you bro, yeah, I, I tore one of, I partially tore some like minor little tendons in like the bottom of my foot. Yeah, no, it didn't end well, but yeah, like I constantly maintain. I could just be like, okay, fine, it'll kill me. I'll write, I'll hate it, but I could just go. So as long as for as long as I feel like that could is the case. I'll, I'll not be running. Yeah, fair. I just don't really enjoy it. I need to. I need to do more. I need to do more. I I, I enjoy it in do some you? ways. Yeah, in some ways it's good. Cycling. Yeah. I don't like cycling to be honest. I find it. I'm too scared. I find it too dangerous these days. Fair, fair. Go like, swimming. That's nicer. I really don't like swimming. I don't like any of it. This is the problem. I don't like any of it. Running's not bad though, because you know if you do a 10k, you burn 500 calories, and I can eat some stuff. Yeah, if I do two ten k's a week, I can eat like a massive. See, but you have to think about these things, don't you? Yeah, because I my lifestyle where yours was like two or three years ago naturally lends itself to just I can be a fat shit and eat what I want. Uh, But you have to think about moving. Yeah, I do. That I do. To be honest, you've got a little sat down job now. I do have a sedentary job. Yeah, but I do build movement and exercise into it. Mm -hmm. Like I do. I go for walks with some of my clients. Oh, that's sometimes what I'm saying. But you phone. have to think about it. Is what yeah, I'm saying. sometimes yeah. when we're on meetings, I go for walks on my own. Yeah. Nearly every day, just like a bit of de-stress, a bit of fresh air kind of thing. Do my exercises, stuff like that. But yeah, I have to actively put in effort. Go to the park. Yes, yes. Um, article in Esquire. Just two more quick ones then. Article in Esquire said, <laughs> are free weights or machines better for your workout? For what? Well, call it what's better. <laughs> cool, we'll call it what's better. Yeah. Free weights or cables? No, free weights or machines, it says. Free weights. Free weights, you got to go for it, yeah. haven't you? Overall, free weights. Free overall. Are all but free machines weights. do have applications, we can't say not. And they, are definitely best better in some cases. There, there are some things that you, you can't do without, can't machine, do without really. machines. Hamstring curl, yeah, lap pull, pull down. down. <laughs> yeah. Difficult to. Lots of these things. Yeah, yeah, there's not many other things. Face pull's good with a machine, mm-hmm. a bit difficult without. You can do it without, but not the best. Yeah. Yeah. Some things about machines are invented specifically to help us in certain ways sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I think free weight is always more fun as well. Like, there's something, again, crude, just caveman mindset about, like, just you and object and I will move object. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like when to take, like, a squat versus a Smith machine squat, yeah. you just can't get jazzed up about a Smith machine squat because, like, I will move this, but it's also assisted by this versus <laughs> just, like, me and bar, I will lift and door. You know, it's just, like, that's nice. I don't get jazzed up about I do, squats, but I know what you mean. Ooh, ooh. I literally, <laughs> I literally ooh, don't. Ooh. That's funny. <laughs> I literally don't. Last one then, article in Men's Health said more exercise could reduce sleep problems. I agree. Yes. I mean, that's the end of it. I, mean, I just thought it was nice to throw in there. I tie yourself out. Yeah, that's it. That's literally it. A lot of people are like, I can't sleep. Well, you need to exercise sometimes, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It's because you've been trying to sleep all day. <laughs> Try <laughs> At your desk at work when you've got home. And you, well, maybe yeah. you don't need that much rest, you know, if you haven't done much. Just mm. tie your body out. It tires the mind out and your body will just put you into that deep sleep for that muscular recovery. True. You know, if you're just tired, if you've worn yourself out either. And um, what, wearing yourself out is specific to each person. For some people, that's a long walk. And even what a long walk is is different for different people. For some yeah, people, true. for some people, they did ten thousand steps, they'd be wiped out. For some people, it's twenty thousand steps, they'd be wiped out. But a nice long walk might sort you. L- weightlifting sorts me out. Or if I sometimes I'll fall asleep when I don't want to after weightlifting. You know, after a hard leg session, yeah. middle of the day, I'm going down after lunch. 
<laughs> it all becomes too much real fast. Well, I, let me tell you something that's been hilarious news of the Will Week. That's funny. Me having had these three weeks off and I've been feeling just super glazed over, like I said. Not in a bad way. I've been feeling lovely. But like just been, I've been sat like this for three weeks. Glazed in what way? Like a donut? Just donut to, to, over. I've been a donut for three weeks, basically. <laughs> yeah. Just sat in this position in my Sweet chair at home. Lovely. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> this has been it. And. I like, I rejigged my Ooh, entire tasty. bed. I've got like an ottoman bed that opens and I've got storage underneath. It's lovely. I highly recommend one. Mm. And I was cleaning out the bottom of it and, and sorting all my storage out with my newfound time. And I stood up afterwards after I'd done it and I'd like, I was dead, mate. I was puffing and I was like, I felt like a 40 year old like chain smoker or something. And I you just say forty like it's old. Ah! I mean, if you've been smoking for forty, that might be. A yeah, true, true. If but I don't know. I just felt like fat much. and old, and just like I couldn't do anything. It was hilarious. Like I stood up from doing a basic activity, and I was knackered, and I was like, "This isn't good." Oh, good. You've had that sedentary couple of weeks. Eh? <laughs> it's happened. Yeah, <laughs> we're back to it now. It's grand. Back to the park. Yeah, I'm ready. Are you? See you later, ladies I'm ready. and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Will. <laughs> nice to get back in a little show. Eh? Thank you for having me, yeah. I'll put this online as fast as possible. I'll try and make it tomorrow or the next day. I'll link it out to the to the masses. Oh my God, the masses. It's been nice to speak to you and nice to see you again, though. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in, people. Thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Pip, we'll speak pip. to you and we'll see you again soon. Take care. <laughs>